Hey, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to Mountain Label Music. And today we're gonna talk, what are we talking about? Today we're gonna, <laughs> today we're gonna be talking about setting up and getting more familiar with the Dadman software for Avid Matrix Studio interfaces and Avid Matrix 2 interfaces. And for anyone that has a Digital Audio Denmark or Dad audio interface, that's kind of a legacy item now that Avid kind of owns the rights for that kind of thing. Now, before we actually get started getting familiar with the Dadman software, we're actually going to go to Avid's website where we can find the download links for the software. Now, Digital Audio Denmark actually has their website where you can go and download that stuff, but I recommend getting your product registered and just finding the software links within your Avid account. And we actually have the Dadman installer here. It's just a zip file. You're gonna double click on it and follow the prompts that it gives you on screen. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail in this video on how to install Mac OS programs. There are plenty of videos out there for that. Once you get that downloaded, it's as simple as double clicking or clicking on the logo in your launch pad or just hitting command space and typing in dad and it's right there. Now, when you first open this, it's gonna look a little different depending on whether or not you have your interface hooked up or if you have any previous monitor configurations. So right now I have a lot of configurations on my interface. So it, it is gonna look a little different. Now, if you don't have an audio interface and you're just wanting to download this software, it's probably not gonna work in your favor because what dad is going to do, it's going to try to look for an audio interface. And if you haven't set it up via Dante virtual sound card or via Thunderbolt connection or, or a DigiLink, uh, DigiLink's another example, it's probably not gonna let you adjust any of the settings or go into and actually get familiarized with it. So make sure you have that stuff set up first. I have an old video right here that goes into detail, way more into detail about how to get started with Dolby Atmos, but we're just wanting to do a quick guide here for today. The first thing I wanna take a look at is the left tabs and being able to click on these little buttons that allow us to look at the analog to digital conversion and the digital to analog conversion, essentially your inputs and your outputs. Right now I have a Dolby Atmos configuration, so my DB25 cable that's branched out to XLR is going to all of my inputs and outputs to my Atmos system. Right now I don't have any inputs set up directly. Um, that's gonna change in a little while, but I, I use a separate interface that I'm gonna be connecting via ADAT. And that's a, that's a whole different story, but let's, let's move on. Let's just move on. So next thing we have is our monitor profiles, which I'm gonna get into more detail later on. This basically determines uh, how you're monitoring your system. So sometimes when you go into a studio you've worked with before and you've configured your own profile with the equipment they have there, you can actually bring that profile back to your own studio or to other studios if it has a similar or same configuration. At the bottom, we have some I.O. for inputs and outputs to route ADAT to DigiLink, DigiLink to ADAT through Dante Virtual Sound Card, and also a Thunderbolt option. The Thunderbolt option probably won't show up unless you have a Thunderbolt PCIe card. The next one is more configuration. So right now my sync source is via ADAT1, which is my Focusrite interface because I have it connected via an ADAT port, which is gonna allow you to sync out with World Clock or World Clock Base. You can do various sync terms with high Z or 75 ohm, digital delay for synchronization purposes, your sample rate and what you're adapting to for the sample rate. Then the next tab for that configuration is Dante. If you're not familiar with Dante, don't worry about it. And even DigiLink settings, which I, I don't use DigiLink, but if you're more into the HDX systems, this will be really beneficial to you. What I mainly want to focus on now is these tabs up in the top left corner. So I'm gonna click on file and we have some very op various options that look from look similar but aren't exactly the same. So right here we have open and close or open and save, save as. This is essentially the settings that you have for your interface. This isn't a monitor profile. This is essentially what you would load into your interface. Let's say if it gets shut off and you haven't saved it to the interface itself, you'll use this as essentially your default configuration for IO. But that doesn't determine what is configured in the IO settings, if that makes sense. I'll get more detailed in just, just a little bit. The monitor profile is 
a different thing altogether and that gives you the ability to adjust separate buttons on a separate monitor controller and being able to configure other IO based on what your monitoring system is. It's a little bit confusing, but we'll, we'll get more into that in just a moment. Next is our edit tab, which is, I, I don't know much about this tab. It doesn't look very useful. I've never had to use this tab, so I don't even worry about it. Next is our settings, which gives us two of the most important tabs in this software, and that's device list and monitor profile. You also have MIDI settings if you have a separate controller that you want to make param adjust parameters within the Dadman software. If like, let's say if you have a separate MIDI controller with just knobs on it, you can have that set up for the Dadman software. I don't use it personally, but it's there if you want it. And same with Yukon. If you have an external controller that can that supports Yukon, you can do that as well. And for window, this is just resizing your window tabs. I, you don't have to mess with it, but if you want to learn some key commands for it, it's cool to have. You can also go to your dad man up in the top left corner along beside these tabs and check your settings. So basically this just allows you to configure basic view settings, whether you want the, G, the GUI layout to be different, you want to show in the dock down below, or if you just want it up at the top with the menu bar. And the other settings with the profile between the interface and your monitor profile, you can select between three different options about saving those files. I originally allowed it to always save because I was always changing things and I wanted to see how I configured things last time I was in the studio when I would turn off my entire rig. But as I'm playing with it more now, just seeing what the capabilities are, I don't want to overwrite my already existing good file. I know I could just create another file separately for that, but I like to just leave it as it is. So we're gonna close out of that. The first thing we're gonna actually go to is our settings tab and go under device list. This is gonna give us a list of devices that are connected. And right now I'm connected to my Matrix Studio via Thunderbolt and I actually have a Stream Deck connected to be used as an MOM MOM interface. More on that in just a second. This will be where if you needed to do a firmware update, so I just recently did a firmware update for the Matrix Studio, you would right click on that, and then you would get some various settings where you can restart the interface, load into recovery mode or firmware update, which is where you would upload your file. I think it'll automatically find it online if there is one, but. I just recommend downloading the file yourself and doing the firmware up, uh, doing the firmware update manually. So we're going to close out of this. I'm going to go back into that settings tab, go to monitor profile. And this is going to be the big essentials for your IO in your matrix studio. So right now I have what is three groups set for Atmos playback, headphone one and headphone two. So this is actually my speaker playback is the Atmos playback. And if you don't see any of these, you might have to go up to the select unit tab and select your matrix studio. If it isn't connected, it probably won't show up and then <laughs> enable monitor. There's a checkbox. So make sure that checkbox is selected, but I, these groups are essentially my inputs and outputs for various monitoring situations, if that makes sense. So for example, my sources for Atmos playback is right now, my main left and right, which is my mic and instrument inputs. I have two instrument inputs on the front and two mic on the back. I can do either one, not both at the same time. And that'll be my sources left and right. I like to use this for an aux cable or like setting up a Bluetooth device. And then my Atmos source is Dante virtual sound card currently anyways. And that allows me to select what the role of each channel coming into my interface and basically just configuring it how best fits whenever I'm ready to output to whatever device and talking about outputs. I'm going to close this source and open the outputs tab. Now this is my Atmos output, which is my physical outputs on my interface, which is my D to a my digital uh, digital to analog conversion. And I will set those roles according to whatever channel my output is. So for example, my left channel is going to go out of the first XLR on my snake center is going to be the second and the, my right channel is going to be actually channel 11 in the next tab. We have what's considered the fold down. These are basic configurations for how you want 
your outputs to merge with each other, especially if you have an Atmos system, you wanna be able to check in, let's say 5.1, 7.1, and smaller formats to make sure your mix translates all around. We're gonna talk more about that in just a second in the fold down tab. We're gonna close this. The way you would configure one of these groups is you just right click on the groups panel and you're gonna add monitor, which adds an additional monitor here and it gives you the ability to edit all of these different options. And if you wanna add new or input in an existing set, you'll just follow it accordingly. I'm gonna remove this monitor because I don't need it. We're now gonna switch over to the fold down tab. This is where you're gonna configure your soloing options or your fold down options for, especially if you have a mom device or if your interface is in front of you and you wanna configure some buttons for these fold downs. So let's say for example, my Atmos to 5.1 folds down at zero dB all around. So whenever I want my rear speaker to go into my sides or vice versa, it folds to one or the other at zero dB. It's gonna be the same level. And same with Atmos to 7.1. Now there are some additional fold downs that are called le left, right surround, center surround, LFE. These are basically buttons that allow me to solo certain speakers in my configuration. So if I only have some input going into the left speaker and the right speaker coming from my source, going out to my output, it's only gonna play those sources and those outputs, allowing me to essentially just solo speakers. I'm not folding anything down. I'm not condensing it to stereo. I'm just playing back my Atmos mix without all the speakers, just my left two, with my left and right speakers. And I did that with my side surrounds, my rear surrounds, and anything that deemed necessary. I also have the ability to mute, let's say my height speakers. I just don't put those into the equation. This zero dB basically just tells you that the full signal from your source is going to your output. Now, if I wanted to change that, and I, let's say if I put on this to negative three, that means it's gonna be three dB lower than what the source allowed. And once it gets to the output of your speakers, it's gonna be three dB quieter. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And you have various inputs and outputs that you can configure. But in our next tab, the group formats, if you wanted to create your own custom thing, if you don't wanna follow the preset formats to be able to create your fold downs in your groups, you can do so. You just right click and create new format and it allows you to create up to a higher channel count. Let's say if you have an 11.1.8 system and you want to add additional side surrounds, height surround pairs, and rear surrounds, this is where you're gonna do it. This is where you're gonna add it yourself because unfortunately it doesn't come with a preset group format. So this is how you would configure that if you had a bigger interface and more channels to work with to have that allowed format. Don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna just hit cancel. You can tell that I really don't wanna do anything to my current setup, but I encourage you with this software, it's it's a little crazy, so I give, give yourself some time to learn this. The next tab we're gonna to go to is the mom. What a title. So basically what I have right now connected is a stream deck, which allows me to use it and the buttons like an MOM interface. Now this interface is just a monitor controller. It's just buttons, a dial, and a few other little doodads. With the configuration of my Stream Deck, I can do much more than that. I can go to different pages. I can switch up my profile on the Stream Deck if I don't really need anything related to Dadman. And I can just do so much more with that. And I can label the buttons. Whereas with the MOM monitor device, you can't label the buttons unless you just wanna put some masking tape on there and label with a Sharpie. But anyways, what you can do is you can right click, add a new mom, and you can click, uh, select your device here. But what I wanna show you is when we do this drop down arrow, you have up to four layers per mom device. Meaning on, let's say our first layer, I have it set for solo. I have it labeled on my stream deck separately. For my first buttons, I have my fold down in my Atmos monitor set to left and right surround. And what I can do with all these buttons, I can change what the button does. So for example, if I wanted bass management, I can do that. I'll go to Atmos playback, which is my speakers, go to sources, no outputs, go to Atmos output and select bass management active. So if I wanted to turn off bass management to see what it would sound like, I can do that. Same with all my EQ. Or if I just wanted to turn off my speakers altogether, 
I just hit element active and it'll turn my speakers on and off when I press that button. And that's only the tip of the iceberg of what you're capable of doing with this. I highly recommend experimenting with it if you ever get the chance. Let's move on to the next tab, which is the Matrix Studio. This is essentially the same thing as the MOM controller, except the buttons that are actually on your interface. I don't do much with this. I kind of leave it at the default because it's it, it comes out of the box just how I like it. And I don't really do much outside of just maybe switching a few meter types. So now that we've kind of got a tour of the Dadman software, now we kind of want to get it configured and start playing around with some different inputs and sources and outputs. Now, obviously the best way for you to check this out for yourself is to get an interface and download the software. But if you actually want to go through extra steps and processes on how to configure some of these things, I highly recommend checking out this video. It has a lot of repeat stuff that I've said in this video, but it's a little more in depth on how to get started with Dante Virtual Sound Card and actually having examples in getting this set up for Atmos and playing back with Dante Virtual Sound Card as your main audio output for Pro Tools, Logic Pro, whatever it is. But I'll be sure to leave that video right here for y'all. Aside from that, I hope to see you guys in the next video.